So one of the things we need to get a handle on is in order to understand celestial objects, the formation of our solar system, you know, the how stars work, etc., is just kind of the basic unit of matter um, that we call an atom, right? So ast actually astrophysicists are um, um, can be more intrigued by even smaller particles, but the three particles we're going to focus on are the uh, neutron, the proton, and the electron. So just to kind of uh, give you a sense for it, you probably already have a sense for it, but um, atoms have what we call a nucleus, and the nucleus is, is really pretty darn small uh, compared to actually um, what we call the electron cloud outside the nucleus. But in the nucleus we have protons, which here are red, and we also have neutrons, okay? Actually the symbol for protons is going to be a P with a plus sign. The symbol for neutrons is going to be N with a little zero because they are neutral. They're like Switzerland. So the, this diagram actually is showing you the nucleus in the center of an atom just like that. And I bet you already kind of see these little blue dots here. Da, 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 da. Well, actually, I'm making blue dots, but they're red dots in the figure. Those red dots are trying to show you the electron cloud, where the electrons are. Um, and the symbol for an electron is a lowercase e with a superscript negative because they're negatively charged. One of the things we need to talk about momentarily is that actually kind of how much a negative an electron is and how much a positive a proton is. Actually, they cancel each other out with regard to charge if you have one of each. So that's actually important here in a minute. But, but meet an atom, right? It has a nucleus with the protons and the neutrons, and then it has an elect electrons and a cloud outside the nucleus. That is an atom. And actually, an atom is the smallest um, fundamental piece of matter, okay, that actually you can't break it down any further by ordinary chemical reactions. You can smash an atom, but that wouldn't be an ordinary reaction. That would be some sort of nuclear um, fission reaction. So that's kind of an atom. Now, let's see if I have this over here. Okay, yeah. So um, what is important about those three what we call subatomic particles? Well, protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus and they are positively neutrally charged respectively. Now, an important thing about protons is the protons in the nucleus of an atom give the identity of an atom. So, for instance, if you have a, um, if you have a what we call a periodic table of elements, it has all the possible elements um, that there ever are, um, they usually um, will have a whole number, what I call a whole number, each one of those boxes. That whole number in the box is what we call the atomic number. So the atomic number is the number of protons, and actually it for sure tells you what the identity of that element is. So for instance, um, hydrogen. Hydrogen is atomic number two. So it has two protons in its nucleus. Okay, And if it's neutral, it has two electrons in the cloud outside its nucleus. Speaking of then... Um, with regard to um, atoms, most, or I say normal atoms, I don't know if I even want to go that far, but typically you have the same number of protons as you do electrons. And if they are equal, then actually you end up with an atom that doesn't have any charge. Okay, that actually is what we call neutral, a neutral atom. Now, um, if your electrons come and go, then they create what we call ions. Um, so your electrons, if you get a few extra electrons, then actually it's going to be a negative atom we call an anion. If you lose a few electrons, then it's going to be um, uh, have more protons than um, electrons, and it will be positively charged. We call it a cation. But anyway, if your electrons are not equal to your protons, then you have an ion which definitely happens in outer space. Um, one last thing we need to kind of get under our belt, maybe I'll do it this way, is if you look in the nucleus and if you literally count the number of protons, which says what element an atom is, and if you count the number of neutrons in the nucleus, then you have come up with what we call the mass number. Now sometimes I'll call it just mass number or atomic mass number. It's the same thing. So for instance, we could go over here and we would say that the atomic mass number or the mass number, mass number, 
is equal to, well, it's hard to see. Well, if, if what we see is what we got, it looks like that there are um, four red protons, four, so four protons, plus there are three gray neutrons, okay? So the mass number would be seven, okay? That's how that goes. So one more slide on the whole, well, I guess two more slides on the whole atom thing. Um, so the thing is, I told you protons are important because they say what element um, an atom is. So for instance, anything with six protons, anything with six protons is by golly carbon. Isn't that so cool? It's got to be a carbon atom. Now the deal is, is um, the kind of structure of a carbon atom kind of allows for some different possibilities with regard to the number of neutrons. We have one version, I'll call this version A, that actually has six neutrons. Okay, so 6 plus 6, it has a mass number or atomic mass number of 12. Okay, um, here we have a version of carbon that actually has 7 neutrons. So 6 plus 7 is 13, so that's its mass number. And over here we have the heaviest of all because neutrons um, and protons actually are, of these three particles, um, neutrons and protons give the atom mass. So 6 plus 8, I get 14. So that's the mass number of that version of a carbon atom. Okay, so we have three different, what we say, forms of carbon. They all have six protons, but they differ by the number of neutrons in their center. So these are what we call isotopes. Okay, isotopes of the same element, isotopes of the element carbon. So, um, and that they're actually a player um, in understanding the way things work. Um, so for this, for version A, if we want to get down to the nitty-gritty, we would call that carbon-12. Okay, for this version B, we would call that carbon-13. Version C, we would call that carbon-14. So what you do is you give the name, and then you give the mass number, or atomic mass number, to tell you to get down to the real deal, how many neutrons are in the center of that particular version of the element carbon. So if you've ever heard of, I'll give you kind of my quick and dirty um, explanation of carbon-14 dating. Um, so if you've ever heard of um, using, uh, of carbon-14 dating, what they are doing is using this kind of, I'll say, rare version of um, carbon. Um, carbon-14 actually can, uh, living things things that are alive, plants and animals, will actually be incorporating um, carbon-14 into their bodies as they live. When they die, they're no longer um, uh, incorporating this kind of relatively rare version isotope of carbon into their bodies, and carbon-14 starts to decay. So the decay process... Uh, well, the decay process is going on all along when they're living, too. But the decay process then will kind of catch up, and your carbon-14 will diminish over time. So there, time, ah! So scientists know the rate at which this decay occurs, so actually then they can kind of backtrack to the last time that object, um, excuse me, an object, with that living thing, the last moment that that living thing was alive, carbon-14 dating. So um, also on this slot figure, um, it doesn't necessarily have to do with isotopes. We have um, a few atoms kind of looking at up here. Um, we have hydrogen, the element hydrogen, the element helium, and again, the element carbon. Um, so in chemistry, to, to uh, uh, talk about which element it is, we use what we call elemental symbols, which it's weird, but the elemental symbols actually are letters. So the symbol for hydrogen is H, the symbol for helium is HE, the symbol for carbon is C. So here actually what they've done is to give a number in the upper left-hand corner, which is the mass number or atomic mass number of that particular what we call isotopic form. So we can actually kind of backtrack from those mass numbers if we want. If we look down here, Okay, we can kind of dissect this particular, for instance, hydrogen atom. Its atomic number is one, so that means it has one proton in its nucleus. Okay, this isotope of hydrogen, its atomic mass number is also one. Now, here's the deal. Atomic mass number is protons plus neutrons. 
But if it has a um, one proton and its atomic mass number is one, guess what? It has zero neutrons. No neutrons for that version of, of hydrogen, the most common version of hydrogen. So here we have helium, um, atomic number. So it has two protons in its nucleus. Um, this particular isotope of helium has atomic mass number of four. So do you buy this? That actually two of those four are protons, so the other two are neutrons. So actually this version has two neutrons. And if we move over here to, and we looked at the three different, or three different isotopic forms of carbon below, um, but here the atomic number of carbon is six, so that means it has six protons in its nucleus. Um, for this particular form of carbon, its mass number, or atomic mass number, is 12. So you figure of those 12, six of them are protons, so the other six must be neutrons, and that is actually how it is. Now, I don't want you to kind of say, well, for most atoms, we have the same number of protons as neutrons. It just so happens in the case of helium and, and carbon, that is the case. So one last thing before we leave the whole atom thing is to recognize the fact that um, atoms join together to make what we call compounds. So, um, and we are very grateful for that, right? So if you've drinking, if you have consumed any water recently, okay, that actually, there's a three atoms, there's one oxygen and two hydrogens, okay, that are stuck together. Now, as I've drawn this picture, this water, what we call water molecule, right, um, those, let's see, pick the color purple, these lines right here that join the oxygen and the two hydrogens, actually, those lines are chemical bonds, Okay, so we basically need two chemical bonds, right, to make an overall water molecule. Um, so I am just, I think it is so cool. I think atoms are great. When we talk about um, the Big Bang and the beginning of our universe, we're going to see that most atoms were hydrogen atoms. And it took stars, well actually, I think we talked about this already, introduced you to the idea of um, of uh, uh, galactic recycling, stars actually make heavier and heavier elements. They make elements with more protons in their nuclei. So I am just amazed. Now one of the things that may or may not come up is when to get one of those chemical bonds, okay, whether, um, whether uh, electrons are shared or passed, transferred, actually it's going to be all about the electron. The electrons are do the heavy lifting to make chemical bonds. Let's see. So I guess the other thing I have down here is just to kind of, you know, bring up some formulas. Um, you'll have to, again, kind of bear with me. My subscripts didn't transfer. So the first one's water. The second one's carbon dioxide. You might recognize these are just examples of chemicals, um, excuse me, chemical compounds. NaCl is table salt. C6H6 is benzene. Now, over here, actually, I added some compounds. Uh, of course, you recognize water. Um, CO is carbon monoxide. Okay. And this list over here, carbon monoxide, um, CH4 is methane. We actually are going to see a few of these in our next chapter on um, the, the, how, our, how our solar system was formed, how our sun and the planets were formed. Um, NH3 is ammonia. Okay, so these are compounds and these compounds I said are, um, I listed them out by name because actually when we look at um, the universe, okay, these are being formed out there we know on other planets, etc. Or not, I shouldn't say they're being formed. I should say early on um, uh, from the remnants of other stars that, that, that our solar system was formed from, these compounds were already floating around. I just think that is so cool.